So if you're like me and have a wealth of random Pokemon knowledge stuffed in your head, you may recall a certain trainer on Route 203 in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. When you go to battle last Madeline, she'll say she got Orberg's Gym Badge, and then proceed to send out a level 5 Starly and a level 5 Bidoof. Now, you may just look at this as Game Freak being dumb, or maybe you'll think something like, oh, well, maybe she has a Water or Grass Pokemon, but it's fainted when you fight her, or something, I don't know. Now, Game Freak changed her in Platinum, as she has a level 7 Psyduck in that game, something much better equipped for being the first... Wait, Psyduck doesn't get Water Gun until level 9? That changes nothing, then! Anyway, what if we assume Last Madeline actually beat Rourke with just a level 5 Starly and a level 5 Bidoof? Is that even possible? Let's find out. So, I could just catch a wild Starly and a wild Bidoof, raise them to level 5, and go battle Rourke, but that's not using Last Madeline's team. That's using an approximation of Last Madeline's team. So, I used a cheat code to catch her Pokémon, opened up PK Hex to ascertain their exact stats, and then gave myself exact copies of her Pokémon. They have okay natures, their moves are just their regular level up moves, and they have zero IVs in all stats. Rourke can't possibly beat this. Before we start the battle against Rourke, let's take a couple minutes to look at his team and the challenges it presents. He has a level 12 Geodude, a level 12 Onix, and a level 14 Cranidos, meaning all of his Pokémon are 7 to 9 levels higher than our Starly and Bidoof, on top of all of them resisting our normal type moves. Not the greatest start. However, all of Rourke's Pokémon only know physical moves, and our Pokémon conveniently know Growl, allowing us to weaken Rourke's attacks. Heck, even just one Growl is enough to let Bidoof survive Geodude's Rock Throw. Of course, we'll be at very low health after one of those, so we have two options. A, don't take a hit for the rest of the battle, or take only one more hit and finish the rest of the fight with Starly, or B, use a potion. Option A would require the luckiest person on Earth, or extreme RNG manipulation in order to happen. Rock Throw, the only attacking move of Geodude and Onyx, has 15 PP and 90 accuracy. Out of the 30 uses of Rock Throw, you'd need 29 of them to miss. I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel like doing the math to figure out the odds of that happening, but they probably make winning the lottery look like a cakewalk. Like, this fight is theoretically possible to do without taking a hit, at least until we get to Rourke's Kranidos, who only has 100% accuracy moves, so... You'd have to have the thing use nothing but Leer in order to beat it, basically. Is this possible? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not testing that, though, that's for sure. So, using a potion seems like our best bet, even though these kinds of challenges typically don't allow the use of items in battle. But how many potions are we able to have? Our money is limited at this point in the game. There's no way to get infinite items to sell or rebattle trainers. If we defeat every trainer that we can fight and sell every non-potion item we can get, we're able to get a total of 39 potions. But wait, there's one item that we might not want to sell. In the Orberg Mines, we're able to pick up an X Defend, an item that gives plus one defense to one of our Pokemon. On top of that, our Bidoof has Simple for its ability, which means that X Defend actually gives us plus two defense, which is huge. And items are used before moves, which, considering Rourke's Geodude outspeeds our Bidoof, that makes the first turn vastly easier. So, keeping the X Defend, we're able to have a total of 38 potions. Okay, getting into the battle itself, Rorik leads with Geodude, who has Stealth Rock and Rock Throw. We leave with Bidoof and use the X Defend on the first turn, allowing us to get to plus 2 defense before Rorik has a chance to use a move. If he uses Rock Throw, we're able to survive it, but we'll have to use a potion. If he uses Stealth Rock or Mrs. Rock Throw, we're able to start using Growl. Once we're able to get 6 Growls off, Rorik's Geodude will only be able to deal about 4 damage to us. You know, unless he gets a critical hit, which will always KO us regardless of our health. At this point, I started using Tackle, which only deals 1 point of damage more often than not, to try and get Geodude down to around half health. 
once that's done, I go back to Growl, because even though it won't do anything, it'll allow me to save tackles for later in the fight. Eventually, Geodude runs out of PP and starts to use Struggle, and loses a quarter of its max HP every time it's used. After the first struggle, Rourke uses his first potion, and after a few turns, the Geodude eventually goes down. I make sure to use a potion before the last struggle is used, though, to make sure I go into the Onyx with as much health as possible. I make this sound pretty simple, but a critical hit from either Rock Throw or Struggle will always KO Bidoof, and we can't afford to lose a Pokémon. Since critical hits have a 1 in 16 chance of happening, and you're definitely going to be on the receiving end of at least 16 attacks, there's a decent chance a critical hit's going to happen, and you're going to have to restart the fight. But anyway, hooray! We defeated the Geodude, and Rourke sends in Onyx. This is where things start going downhill quick. Onyx has the same moves as Geodude, but also Screech. That additional move effectively counteracts our Growls, and with Bidoof having Simple, Screech lowers our defense even faster than usual. One Screech will lower Bidoof's defense by four stages, as opposed to Growl lowering attack by one stage. This massive difference in stat stage drops actually makes Onyx pretty scary for a few turns, until we can get its attack lowered by three, four, five stages. And because Geodude got Stealth Rock up, Onyx won't try using Stealth Rock as long as Screech and Rock Throw are usable and will do something. This means that Onyx effectively only has two moves, Rock Throw and Screech. When you combine Screech's efficacy and Rock Throw being the only other option for Onyx to use, this thing is actually pretty threatening. And sure, Starly doesn't have Simples, so Screech won't lower its defense as much as with Bidoof, but Starly takes double damage from Rock Throw, so it essentially changes nothing. So it might not surprise you to hear that I lost to this thing. A lot. If Onyx lands two Screeches, you have to get off five Growls in order to survive a Rock Throw from it. Sure, you can switch out to Starly to get rid of the defense drops, but you'll need to use three Growls to have Starly survive a Rock Throw with no defense drops. And yes, we want to keep Starly alive. Heck, even if it just uses Screech once, you have to get off two Growls as Bidoof in order to live. So basically, in order to KO Rorik's Onyx, we need to get multiple Growls off before this thing even thinks about using Screech. And if one of our Pokémon gets knocked out, we have to start the fight over and go through the Geodude again. It ended up taking me several hours to get a good run against the Onyx, between having to dodge critical hits from both the Geodude and the Onyx, and then getting the right RNG against the latter. Like with Geodude, we have to get the Onyx to use Struggle, and that's a fun time because Screech has 40 PP. Like, you can probably get the KO without resorting to Struggle by switching into Starly after all the rock throws are used, but I didn't really think of that until the moment I'm typing this up, so... Kranidos! Kranidos has a completely different moveset from Rourke's other Pokémon, having Headbutt, Pursuit, and Leer. And as you might be able to see, this moveset sucks. I mentioned it before, but all of Kranidos' moves have 100% accuracy, so they're not going to miss. Leer is another defense lowering move, and although it only lowers defense by one stage, that's still problematic for Bidoof. And finally, Pursuit does double damage if it's used the turn you switch out, which, you know, you might want to do to get rid of the defense drops. On top of this, Kranidos has a staggering base 125 attack. That's more attack than Tyrantrum, a freaking T-Rex. This thing has so much attack, if it uses Headbutt without us having gotten a Growl off, it KOs us every time. Even Pursuit without us switching can do catastrophic damage. I'd like to say that this is the first time I got to Kranidos in probably over four hours of testing. And if you get this far, one wrong move on your part, or one right move on the AI's part, and you lose this battle. You have to start the fight all over again. You have to go through the Geodude and the Onyx again. I did manage to get a bit lucky and got a bit of damage in, but I ended up losing. The issue wasn't running out of potions, I still had a decent number left. 
but you need such good RNG at this part, and it takes such good RNG to even get to this part, that I didn't have it in me to sit for another four hours to try to get this far again. Theoretically, this is possible. I did manage to damage the Kranidos, so if you get the right RNG and switch smartly enough to keep this up, you'll probably be able to beat Rourke with Last Madeline's team? It just requires so much to go right that I'm not sure it's really worth it. You know, without heavy RNG manipulation, if you can even RNG manipulate that much, but we're not counting that. But what if we make things easier for us? What if we change this challenge from, can we beat Rourke with Last Madeline's team, to, can we beat Rourke with a level 5 Bidoof and Starly? If we trade in some TMs and held items, we can actually have some decent firepower. Bidoof is able to learn Grass Knot, and Starly can get Steel Wing, although Quick Attack is probably still going to be Starly's best bet, just because it has priority. We can also use Vitamins to give these guys an extra stat point in some areas. I'll put up what vitamins I used on who on screen, because I honestly can't be bothered to double check what I did while writing the script. With all of these changes, while we aren't technically using Last Madeline's team anymore, can we reasonably beat Rourke now? Against this Geodude, I luck out and get a critical hit with Grass Knot. This isn't necessary, as without a crit, it does around two thirds of Geodude's HP. So you just need Geodude to use Stealth Rock or Miss Rock Throw. But hey, I'll take it. And technically, you do survive a Rock Throw now that you have EVs and maxed IVs. So you don't need Geodude to miss it. But it helps you out if you avoid getting hit here. Onyx misses a Screech, which is perfect, and Grass Knot always Oko's him. It's worth noting that we can actually take a Rock Throw from Onyx, and fairly well at that. So it doesn't need to miss a move or use Stealth Rock. As for Kranidos, it takes Grass Knot pretty well, but thankfully it used Leer twice in a row, allowing us to get into the red. After a potion and another Grass Knot undoing said potion, we get taken out by Headbutt, but Starly is able to come in and get the revenge kill with Quick Attack. If that seemed relatively simple, I assure you this wasn't a walk in the park. Despite the odds being incredibly merciful compared to the previous team, I still lost this fight for around an hour straight before getting the successful run. See what interesting adventures trainer dialogue can send us on? Literally the only reason I looked into this was because a trainer in the game claimed she did this. I hope you all found this video interesting, and if you want some more interesting Pokemon stuff, check out the videos on screen. With that, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Please consider helping me out by hitting like and subscribe, and a big thanks to Mithril Monarch, along with the rest of my patrons on screen here, for going the extra mile and financially supporting the channel. See you next time, everyone!